Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. While the last video was focused on the moon, this video will be primarily focused on arrivals at Mars, but first we have this minor course adjustment for a mission to Saturn, which carries Thy Lord Root and Mr. Doobie. And so we're just doing an ion engine burn there. And they are still set to go arriving at Saturn. And we will catch up with them in a few years, basically. Also before our Mars arrivals, we have to resupply the International Space Station. And I decided to go with a French service module, it looks like. I was playing around with the recoloring UI with the procedural parts. I don't know which order went in. Either we had decided to launch on the Ariane 6 and therefore I made a French service module for the resupply vessel or I made the French flag thing on the resupply vessel and then decided to launch an Ariane 6. I'm not sure which way it went but here we go and standard Ariane 6 but it's one of those rockets with a Hydrolox upper stage the Vinci engine is not that weak, it's 200 kilonewtons. Oh, and I need to work on the booster separation with this rocket. That is my model, so I have to tune up the booster decouplers. But, and well, at least the fairings work, right? But yeah, this is a pretty heavy load to low Earth orbit, and this rocket isn't meant for low Earth orbit things, really. Uh, it's meant for geosynchronous orbit things. And I keep misjudging the trajectory for these kinds of rockets, especially since the Ariane 6 core stage is really heavy and not featuring a very high thrust weight ratio. So anyway, that, that all went wrong. This re-entered and I had to launch it again. And actually I'm skipping one other failure. Uh, we had to launch this. So there, there was another failure and then we had this launch, which actually uh, worked. Spoilers. But yeah, I didn't want to make it too tedious. I do like to show my failures, but these were all during a live stream, so I did publicize my failures right from the get-go. Uh, anyway, so fairings off, I'd never fixed the booster problem, and, and here we go, we are pretty high up, and with a healthy time to apoapsis, so this time it should work. In fact, we're in too high a position for rendezvousing with the ISS, but better safe than sorry after the previous failures. And to that end, this high pitch as well. It took a while, it always takes a while with these things. But yep, here we are making orbit. Delta V was never a problem, it's just the thrust weight ratio and how to apply it. And... We get to deorbit the upper stage with its Vinci engine, thankfully. So that's done. And on to the ISS. So this has a tiny little engine to work with in order to rendezvous, but it doesn't need that much. And soon enough we are approaching the ISS with our cargo of food, water, and oxygen. Docking maneuvers on the top common birthing mechanism there. At this point there's no dragon or anything on the forward docking port on the PMA there. So here we go. Opposite the HTV on the other side. Modified, heavily modified HTV on the other side. And there we go. I don't generally use the progresses because they carry less, so just to save time I use the largest things I can. So after a little scenic shot of the ISS, we turn to our Mars missions finally. And this is another supply vessel, you can tell by the look of it. And it is going to arrive at Mars, so we're just making a maneuver to adjust our approach. Uh, bring our periapsis close, but not into the atmosphere because this is not aero capturing. It is capturing with its engine. At the bottom of it is the orange, which I made to land base modules on the moon, and it's carrying a whole bunch of extra fuel in those spheres at the between the orange and the supply 
canister, the pressurized vessel, if you will. Uh, unfortunately, I started this burn way, way late. I didn't fully appreciate how low the thrust weight ratio of the orange was. It has all this extra fuel, so it has much longer burn time than usual. And that was not good. In fact, we did not capture at all. We had enough Delta V, but as we drifted out, it wasn't efficient anymore. And so we lost Delta V like that. And it ended up in interplanetary space, which means that uh, these two are a little bit less in luck. They're fine. They've got supplies. We're just going to have to be a little bit more careful with them than before. And I constantly turn to them during their stay before the next opportunity to resupply because I need to make sure that the water recycling is going on because their supplies are so tight. Your pops actually want to land on Mars, which uh, turns out to be tricky. And we'll see the details. But here we've got a Timberwind pebble bed nuclear engine capturing us into orbit around Mars. And this time I was not late. So there we have capture. A few things as satisfying as capturing around another planet. And this is the lander, so we sent the lander separately. And this is supposed to aero capture. You can see an inflatable heat shield at the bottom. And uh, you can uh, the lander actually features an orange. I, I guess I was a little bit obsessed with the oranges at this time. That n was not necessarily the best arrangement. And so this is a tug. So I was just making an adjustment with the Mars lander. And this is a tug vessel, but unfortunately it had boil off. So that's going to be a pain. It can still capture, but it boiled off quite a lot of fuel, so it can't really do its tugging very well. Anyway, so after the adjustment with the tug and uh, dumping the extra methane because the oxygen had boiled off more, we have the aero capture of the Mars lander. I'm not entirely sure why I'm using RCS right now, and so much of it, we're not in the atmosphere. I'm physical time warping in order to use that RCS, but I'm not too sure what's up there. Uh, but potentially I thought that we weren't going to successfully capture and I was trying to slow us down in the best way possible. The heat shield was in the way of the engines. So here we are trying to aero capture and indeed uh, we do not manage to fully capture. We obviously slow down a bit, but not enough. And so we are going to have to dump the heat shield and use the little engines. Those are engines off of the Briz stage. And so that's what's attached to those spherical tanks. So we're not using the oranges engines right here. Those engines, the orange was supposed to be just for landing. Well, no, just for ascent, sorry. This is the tug coming into orbit around Mars. Again, it doesn't have most of the fuel it was supposed to have on arrival. So it's not the most useful thing, but at least we got it into orbit. And incidentally, especially with the aero captures, we have to be careful that we lift up the periapsis after it's captured, right? And so we're doing that here with the lander because we had brought the apoapsis down into a capture, but the periapsis was still low. We had to wait until apoapsis in order to do that. And this is a Mars Station 2. And so this will hopefully be yet another place for our Kerbals to live long term. Not the most ostentatious thing. Ideally, we would combine everything. There goes the outer Briz tank. The Briz has a toroidal tank that it can drop. It's a toroidal drop tank. And so we use that functionality in order to give ourselves a little bit of extra Delta V. Ultimately dumping both of the toroidal drop tanks on our two Briz stages that are combined there. And we get into orbit around Mars. But again, these orbits, the rendezvous is going to take some, some effort. They're not perfect. Now this is two tugs. One, uh, one of each kind of my standard kind of tug. Uh, the orange and then the old style tug. And here we are trying to capture into orbit. And while we did capture into orbit, I did something very silly and I don't know why. But I think part of the problem is that while we captured into orbit, it's almost certain that we're going to come straight down. We're not actually going to stay in orbit. And so I tried to do something to get us 
in a better position, but uh, jettisoning that heat shield was not the thing to do. Um, unless I wanted to destroy the orange. It might have been. Uh, but I tried to uh, boost this thing but to no avail. In other words, I was trying to get it into orbit with its own fuel. It has a lot of delta V after all. It's supposed to be a tug and it doesn't have any payload. But no such luck. Yeah, couldn't get it into orbit like that. So let's ignore all of that and turn to the things that did make orbit. First, the lander should meet up with Mars Vessel 2, which is where your pops is. Your pops wanting to land on Mars. So, but this lander no longer has the Delta V it was supposed to have, so that's, that's a flaw. It also doesn't have the heat shield anymore. It was supposed to retain that in order to potentially come through Mars's atmosphere again. But anyway, we'll get it over to Mars Vessel 2 and see what happens. So here we are approaching. Docking around another planet is always fun. I mean, it's no more difficult than docking around anything else, but it certainly has a different feel to it. The sheer knowledge that Mars is hanging in the background. Well, unfortunately we can't see it right now. It would have been nice to have had it in view, but anyway, there it is. Will your pops go down in that? Hmm. My immediate feeling was that that was not a particularly good lander to begin with. Not to mention, of course, it has the other flaws that we no longer have the fuel that we should have or the heat shield. So, I look to designing a new one. This one based with the the Blue Origin sort of hydrolock stage there, and I wanted more fuel, and then I looked at other things, like putting a Ryan on it for some reason, I don't know why, I don't know why. I'm a very curious sort of person. Anyway, so that set aside, of course we're not at the Mars transfer window anyway, uh, I needed to make use of a Jupiter window in order to get supplies over to Uranus. And to that end, I started building, uh, there was a nuclear stage on top, this is 9 RD-270s at the bottom of the bottom stage. The problem is that the Timberwind doesn't have enough thrust weight ratio to like make orbit, and the 9 RD-270s, configured to pentaborane in this case, uh, do not have enough delta V to push it into orbit. So we need to have something else, boosters. And I decide to put these M1 engines on really, really long boosters that will last through the RD-270 stage and into and beyond, basically. After all, they're more efficient than the RD-270s, so we want to hang on to them for longer. And I didn't want to make a new stage in there because it's already very long and thin. I, I guess I was optimizing for minimum area, minimum drag? I, I don't know. I think I was going for something so easy, but whatever. I don't actually think this is a good idea, but here we go. So again, this is aiming to fly by Jupiter to head to Uranus with supplies uh, to help Mikko out once Mikko arrives at Uranus, which is not for a very long time. So the launch. Those are tiny plumes on the M1s right now, but eventually all the plumes do end up looking better. It's an interesting looking rocket overall. It's not a bad look, it's just really awkward staging. Not this far. Oh, we added some additional RD-270 boosters, by the way. That's what we're dropping off there. It's this part that's awkward. Not impossible. Potentially inadvisable dropping off the stage like that. That's the 9 RD-270s going off. And now we have the M1s, and of course attaching them like this is dubious too. I probably would have gotten better performance if I just lit the Timberwind right now. Maybe, maybe not. But there was no need to, and of course lighting it there means that its thrust would be hitting the boosters, so... We just let the boosters do their thing. They separated straight out, which is good. That's probably what we want anyway. And now we have this, which looks like a Super Regina or something. So, it completes orbit on its own. 
this nuclear stage. It's got oodles of delta V so that it can do the Jupiter transfer. And then our supplies will be on their way with ion engines. That's why we have a huge amount of total delta V. That's because we've got it's an ion engine vessel that that carries the supplies. And so we have our plot for Jupiter. We've got plenty of extra delta V. And the burn, unfortunately, is in the dark again. Can't really appreciate my vessels like this. We have to make an adjustment to get the right timing for Uranus. I started the main burn a little bit off the right time. So after we do that, we separate off the ion ship with its supplies. And it is on its way to Uranus. We will need a mid-course adjustment, so that's why I'm checking out there. But overall, quite doable. And we'll fine-tune it as we get closer. So I said that this was mostly a Mars-focused video, but so many of our Mars vessels, the supply mission and then the pair of tugs, sort of failed that we went through them pretty quickly. Uh, so I checked on uh, Arthur and his mission with Katak around Mercury and I checked on Raider Nick on the surface of the moon because it looked like he was running out of supplies but that was just because uh, TAC life support does not understand simple logistics so we just had to refresh it and help it to understand this a lot of logistics. I had a little bit of a minor heart attack when I saw the regolith base sort of in a weird position I was afraid it was going to explode but Turns out that was all right. And then I decided to send some more people over to the moon by testing out the pair. I don't remember if the pair is featured in this series previously. I don't think this is the first ever test of the pair. And so what we have is a modified proton in a way, but it's modified with three RD-180s at the bottom. That's what we have there. So that's three engines with six nozzles. Those are rd 180s same as are on the Atlas V. And then the upper stage, I think, is just a regular Proton stage, if memory serves. So that's UDMH and NTO there. Um, so off we go with the three rd 180s I didn't want to use the Proton because the pair looks awkward on the Proton, even though the pair was actually made to be launched on the Proton. It's within the Proton's uh, capacity, and also the look was meant to evoke Soviet spacecraft. But there goes the first stage, and now the second stage. But it's the diameter of the pair is about 6.6 .6 meters, so it's really awkward on the Proton's body. And so I made this fatter rocket. And the pair doesn't look quite so awkward on this, I guess you could say. Could do with an, uh, a mount, a more proper mount at the top there. But here we are making orbit. And at that point, I ran out of time for the stream, so the further exploits of the pair will have to wait till another day. It does make its uh, transfer over to the moon, that was quick enough. But yeah, so with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.